Hey Google, how far is it from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to Missoula, Montana? Philadelphia is 2,347 miles away from Missoula by car. Hey Google, how many feet is in 2,347 miles? 2,347 miles is equal to 12,392,160 feet. All right, time for a cross-country road trip with Team Westside. All right, guys, I've been stuck inside, scouring the internet, putting in the basement, and uh, I think we need to get outside for a cross-country disc golf round. What do you guys think about 19 million foot yeah. par five? Let's do it. All right. <laughs> Who's gonna lead us off the tee? Oh, I got this. Big girl, I'll send it to you. All right, great. And then I'll uh, send the fairway driver down to Jared. I got that slide. I'm up shot to Erica. Oh, cool. I'll pass in for Birdie. All right, Birdie on the par five. I'll see you guys on the course. Later. Let's go, team. See ya. Cool. What is up, all you cool cats and kittens? Chris Villa from Team Westside Discs here in Philadelphia, and I'm about to tee off on this epic par five. Fortunately, I have some of my Team Westside teammates way down the fairway to help me complete this hole. Here's a quick tip for throwing long holes. On this tee shot, I'm not actually aiming for the basket. I can't even see the basket. The basket is very far away. Like, imagine you're in Philadelphia, and the basket is in, let's say, Montana. What do you aim for when you're not actually aiming for the basket? You got a wide open fairway, no OBs or Mandos to worry about. It's easy to tell yourself, just crush it. Doesn't matter where it lands, just throw it hard, throw it far. When you're throwing from maximum distance, but you're not actually aiming for something, what happens often is your disc maybe gets turned over, or maybe it hyzers out early, and ultimately only goes about half as far as it could. So, here's a tip, always aim for something. Maybe you pick a landmark on the fairway and you aim for that, but Make it something small, something specific, and try to hit it. What I like to do is pick a spot on the fairway that's both very far and also ideal to set up my second shot. And mentally, I envision a basket right in that spot, and that's what I aim for. Once I have my target, I'm ready to send my disc down the fairway and complete the hole under par. For maximum distance, I'm throwing a West Side World in the VIP X Plastic I got my Team Westside Discs teammate, Chris Baker, way down this fairway. He's going to handle the second shot. So heads up, Baker. Here it comes. Nice shot, Captain. That was a smash. I'll make sure to get this back to you. Hi, I'm Chris Baker, I'm from Team Westside Discs, and I'm here in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, for our second shot in our long par five here, uh, we're looking to get up to a spot here to Jared in Michigan, uh, where he can have a forehand up shot. Uh, Jared has a great forehand, so he needs a shot that will finish off to the right. For this uh, shot, I'm looking for a control driver. Uh, I don't need to send it back to Pennsylvania, just trying to get it to Michigan. So uh, I'm gonna use a uh, Dynamic Disc Sergeant, which is a new control driver, uh, about speed 11. I like this disc because I can trust it. I can throw it a little bit right at my target and let it finish back to the spot where I want to land. Um, so when I'm looking at these fairway shots, um, it's a little bit harder than when you're on the tee. Uh, your run-up's a little bit different. So I'm going to take a really nice slow controlled run-up. Typically, I'll take a couple just practice steps and I want to try to get my brace from it about a half a disc width from my mark. Um, goal is to not have an illegal stance here. You don't have to get too close, just within that 20 by 30 centimeter piece of paper. So we'll go ahead and give it a pull. All right, well, Chris's shot could be coming in here uh, any time now. We'll have to get this down to Erica in Montana, but you should be coming right right around here somewhere. All right, let's go get it. So we've got Chris's shot here. It was a nice little pull with that sergeant. 
Um, so it's my job now to get this drive, this upshot to Erica. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be throwing my west side anvil and VIP plastic on a sidearm. Um, it's a really good, useful tool for upshots. You can get a nice little one-two step, and just pop something on a hyzer. That way you can keep it nice and straight to the basket, start off a little bit left, and kind of just bring it in and we'll get it to circle one. The nice grip I like to use when I'm doing not too far of an upshot is a little bit of a spread finger. So what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take a nice one, two step. I'm not gonna really cross my feet because that kind of complicates things a little bit when you're trying to do a nice little upshot. So what we're gonna do is kinda kinda click them a little bit and then sit and snap on a hyzer. What it's gonna do is gonna start it off a little bit left. I got a little bit of a left to right wind. So this is gonna push this disc up and hopefully we can get this into circle one. All right, Erica, here it comes. Oh yeah, oh nice. What's up guys, this is Erica Stinchcomb on Team Westside. I'm finishing up a par five that Jared Stoll has put just inside the circle for us. And I also have to thank my teammates, Chris Baker and Chris Villa for getting us all the way here. And of course, Steven waits for caddying all the way across the country. So finishing up this long par five, I wanted to take you through my mental putting routine. Now, everybody has a different physical putt. No one looks quite exactly the same. So that is something that you have to practice on your own. But, lucky for us, it's a great time to practice. I've been putting a lot of time with my scout basket over there. So, I'm going to talk about two things. The first is when you're practicing, it's okay to try new things if you're not satisfied with your putting stroke. Um, you know, thinking about maybe how far are you bringing the disc down or are you bringing it to your waist? Maybe thinking about how your wrist or your fingers are moving or, or what your legs are doing. There's a lot of different moving parts in a putt and sometimes in practice, it's beneficial to think about one of those moving parts. But when a putt really matters in competition or, you know, when you have that casual bet with your friends, when the putt matters, if you putt in competition like you practice, when you're thinking about one specific moving part, you're probably going to miss. Um, for example, I recently got a little bit more spin on my disc by getting a little bit more kind of finger and wrist coordination. Um, but I was missing a lot uh, in recent competition because I was kind of thinking of make sure your wrists and fingers are doing this. And if you're thinking about one thing, the rest of your moving parts might not be synchronized how they normally are. So in putting, when it matters, make sure you have the same mental routine, that you take the same sequence and you're thinking holistically. So for example, when I putt, my miss if I miss tends to be low because my problem is I'm a little tense and I can't quite get that fluid motion that I would like to get during a putt. So what I usually do is I take a nice deep exhale, try to relax a little, and I just tell myself usually give it a chance, you know? Uh, I think whatever you tell yourself, you have to frame it in a positive manner. If you tell yourself don't miss low, your brain isn't going to differentiate between don't and miss low. All you're really thinking is miss low or, you know, don't airball or don't blow by it, whatever it is. If you say don't, you're really only thinking about the thing you're trying not to do. So flip it, right? I think, you know, give it a chance, put some air under it, whatever it is. It's usually one of those kind of things. Basically, I'm telling myself the opposite of don't miss low. So make sure you have you know, something that you're thinking about. Pick your aiming point. I just go to the center of the basket. I don't pick a link or anything like that, but I take a breath, I look at the center, and I put it in the basket. That's a good one to think about too. Pizza in the oven. So I'm gonna try to execute what I was just talking about, and uh, hopefully we can get a birdie on this par five.
thanks everybody for watching and uh, I hope that helps you. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed our cross country journey with Team Westside Disc. I finally made it back to my home course here at Princeton Country Club in Princeton, Indiana, home of the 2021 PDGA Amateur World Championships. I'll leave everybody's social media accounts in the description below. Please check them out, subscribe, and follow.